All right, what's up guys? Um, doing a little video today on uh, one of the tactics I like to use in the springtime. Um, this is my first kind of tactics how-to video. Um, so planning on just going through the setup with you and then stuff I like to target. Um, and we'll get right to it. All right, so if you've been watching any of my videos lately, you've probably seen me uh, with this setup in my hand a lot. Um, I do love a spinner bait, especially in the springtime and the fall. Uh, but it's something I'll definitely throw year round. I've had good luck with it in the summer and the winter months too. Um, but specifically springtime is one of those times when a spinnerbait tends to shine uh, pretty well, especially here on Clarks Hill. Just wanted to go through my setup with you. Um, if you're looking to get into throwing a spinnerbait, um, maybe it's not something you've done a ton of before. Uh, hopefully this will be helpful. So this rod is, it's an old Cabela's rod. Um, it's actually a loose blank. It's, it's labeled as a spinnerbait swim jig rod. I've had a couple of these. Um, and not sponsored or anything um, by Luz or Capella's, of course, but um, it's it's been the perfect spinnerbait rod. So it's a seven foot one, and it's a like a medium heavy, moderate fast. Um, so it just has a little bit more tip to it, and that really allows when those fish, you know, inhale this thing, gives them a second to get it in their mouth before I feel it, and then I can set the hook. Um, and uh, so I would say the rod is really important. I mean, you can use any all-purpose rod that you want to. It's, uh, you know, most moving baits, in my opinion, maybe other than a couple of exceptions, um, moving baits, you know, a seven foot to seven six medium heavy will get you by. But if you like the technique specific stuff, I would look for something that's a little bit more moderate fast. You've got a little bit more of that parabolic bend. I like that a lot with open hook baits. So my spinner baits, chatter baits, crank baits, that sort of thing um, is when I'm going to look for that little bit more moderate action. For real, um, I like kind of a medium speed. I personally, unless I'm cranking like a massive nighttime spinner bait with a giant Colorado blade. Uh, I'm usually looking for something in the sixes to low sevens. Um, too fast and I think, you know, those eights or tens, stuff like that. I, I tend not to like those for many things anyways, but especially a spinner bait, I think it uh, just tends to work a little bit too fast. Um, so that's just my preference. Um, but you know, anything in the sixes to sevens, I think will work well on a spinner bait. So this, again, not sponsored, but this is one of the new Berkeley spinner baits. Um, it's got the power bait skirt and all that stuff. Um, personally, there's a few spinner baits that I like. Uh, this one I've just recently been trying and these last few videos, that's what I've been throwing. And you know, it's, it's caught a lot of fish. It's held up surprisingly well too, um, which I'm definitely impressed by. Um, but things you want to look for in a spinner bait. So, uh, you want a good hook. Um, you also want to pay attention to whether there's a keeper on there or not. Um, sometimes I like to throw a spinner bait with some sort of trailer, um, like a paddle tail, um, or a little split tail or something like that. Um, lately I haven't been doing that. Um, and this particular spinner bait, this Berkeley doesn't seem to like to run with a trailer that well. Um, it seems to just like to be itself and not be impeded by any type of soft, plast soft plastic. Um, so, you know, take that for what it's worth. Um, especially when I'm not throwing a trailer, I will have a trailer hook. The only time I really avoid this is if I'm really in some thick wood and stuff like that where this trailer hook just causes more annoyance than help, honestly. Um, but obviously then with spinner baits, the other thing you got to pay attention to is blades. Um, so these are pretty run of the mill, um, just a double willow. Um, you can get willow Colorado combos, double Colorado, single willow, single Colorado. You know, there's Indiana blades, there's all sorts of stuff. Um, you know, a lot of times I find myself throwing a double willow. Sometimes I'll go to a willow Colorado if it's really muddy. Um, but other than that, I, I pretty much stick to double willow. Um, most of these put off pretty good vibration. Um, and if the water is 
so muddy to the point where I feel like I have to have a giant Colorado on. I'm probably not going to be fishing in that water. I love muddy water. I love shallow water power fishing, but if it's that muddy, I might uh, try to find something just a touch cleaner. Um, so pay attention to those. You want um, a spinner bait with a light wire. Um, the caveat with that is if you have a really light wire, it may not last as many fish. Um, so you want to try to find a happy medium. This Berkeley seems to be a nice happy medium. Same with uh, the Booyah Covert. Um, some of the smaller companies um, have some really good ones. Uh, ones in kind of the Georgia area are True Track Lures. Um, that's based here in Augusta. Um, Georgia Blade is up there by Lake Lanier. They've got some, some good ones. Spot Sticker. Um, so there's a few different companies that make kind of a good happy medium. You'll get some uh, some of the JDM type stuff. I've got some OSP spinner baits that are awesome spinner baits, but they're so light wire. I, I can't, I mean, I literally can't boat flip them without breaking them um, if, I, if I've got a fish. So um, definitely pay attention to that. Um, and then really kind of like you've seen in some of my prior videos, I'll, I'll try to add a few clips in, but with these, especially in the springtime right now, you know, these fish are staging, they're working their way back into these spawning pockets, and you really just want to get this thing up into as much of the thick stuff as you can. Um, they see a lot of them this time of year, it's true. Um, so you want to really get this thing in places where other people haven't been putting a bait. Uh, and that's tricky. Um, it takes a lot of practice. You'll see a lot of times I'll do kind of roll or sidearm casts. I'm trying to be very accurate and get this bait right where I want it next to the cover. And if you've noticed um, on some of my videos, you, you can see that the fish are coming right off this cover. I mean, it's fairly unusual except for like herring spawn type time um, here in a couple months where you just throw a spinnerbait and wind it and you'll catch fish. I mean, you can, don't get me wrong, but uh, you want to be throwing this thing at cover. You want to be targeting. Uh, most of the time for me, it's wood. You know, if I'm fishing around wood, a spinnerbait's definitely something I'm going to reach for. Um, so uh, that would be some advice there. Um, my other advice, and you'll probably hear me say this for a lot of baits, uh, but really work on getting a, a good roll cast down. Uh, meaning kind of a, a sidearm cast that you, you'd see me do a lot. And then when you kind of get to the top of that roll, you want to you wanna stop the spool uh, with your thumb. And what that's going to do is that's going to give you a really quiet entry, um, which again is something not everybody does or, or really thinks to do. And I think a lot of the times that, that quiet or almost silent entry will get you just a few extra bites. And uh, sometimes that's all the difference in the world. So um, definitely work on that. Work on your roll cast um, and work on getting that bait to enter the water as, as silently as possible. Uh, and I definitely think you'll see more bites after that. So um, like I said, spinner bait, great springtime bait, something you can throw year round and you'll catch fish um, anywhere that's got, I mean, I was gonna say shad is forage, but there, even places that are just bluegill, if you're fishing ponds or, or rivers or creeks or whatever, um, a spinnerbait's going to catch fish pretty much anywhere. So find some you like. Um, you know, in the big box stores, you've got all sorts of options. You really can't go wrong. Um, the more money you spend, the nicer components you get um, and stuff like that. But, you know, it's really up to you. You can go buy a, a $2 Walmart spinnerbait and you can catch fish all day long. So um, spinnerbait's a great... Uh, great bait for anyone to fish with. It's it's super easy. Um, you really can't fish it wrong, uh, but like I said, bouncing it off a cover um, is going to be kind of your best bet, at least in my experience. Wood, it's going to do really, really well in wood. It'll excel there. So another thing to consider with your spinnerbait is line choice. Uh, typically, I'm going to be throwing fluorocarbon anywhere from 15 to 20 depending on uh, cover type i would say 15 to 17 will really get you by in most situations if i'm really throwing this thing in some thick stuff then sure i'll i'll go up to 20 but 
20 can be a little unruly sometimes and um, you know I'd, I'd prefer 17 to 15 um, I've got 17 on here right now and uh, that does really well I mean I very rarely break off fish if I do lose a fish a lot of times it's because the spinner bait breaks and I'll get the I'll get the blades back and not the body so it always sucks when that happens but it kind of goes into what we were talking about earlier about the the lighter wire um, that's going to happen you know after you catch so many fish on on these spinner baits eventually it's something's going to give um, and a lot of times you'll get your blades back um, and you won't you won't get that body or the fish back so hopefully that's not on a giant but sometimes it happens so uh, just keep that in mind but yeah that that 15 to 17 range would be perfect i think 17 if you if you can only you know you're balling on a budget only have one line uh, that you want to get for a spinnerbait or really any all-purpose rod i think 17 is a is a really good compromise and and will get you through a lot of situations my only other advice would be to try to keep yourself from just reeling straight in all the time again you can catch fish doing that but what you really want to do is be just somewhat erratic i mean you don't have to go crazy but you know pulse i like to pulse a spinnerbait every once in a while that'll just kind of make that skirt flare i'll stop it real quick or if i see it's gonna you know ricochet off a piece of wood i might speed it up real fast so that it'll it'll bounce off something like that but um all that to say you know um be erratic with it try to put it where uh, other people can't and you'll catch a lot of fish Hope that helps.